Hmm. So I won't bother, huh? <laughs> he don't know me very well, do he? So I bet you're wondering where that tweet came from. Well, I hopped on Twitter the other day and I noticed that political correctness was trending. So, of course, I had to see what people were bitching about today. Lo and behold, the very first tweet I saw was this. Saying I'm trans could endanger a person's very life. But please tell me more about how political correctness is making you feel silenced. So, you know, being the proponent of free speech that I happen to be, you can probably imagine how much I hate this political correctness thing. It's basically the death of nuance, right? Because, see, people would rather cry over the fact that I said a naughty word rather than take the time to examine the actual context of what I said. So, getting back to the subject at hand, this person was suggesting that being trans automatically puts your life in danger and that, for some reason, political correctness was helping this situation. Meaning that, for some reason, my choice in language was actively, physically harming those in the transgender community. So, I naturally replied with this. Citation needed. That's all. Nothing more. Nothing less. I just wanted to know where this person got the evidence that pointed to the fact that trans people were being killed and that it had something to do with my choice in language. Then, as you can see, Mr. Gordon over here replied with this article from hrc.org containing a list of transgender people killed this year. Upon inspection of this list, I immediately noticed that some of them don't even have any arrests or motives listed. So I concluded that you can't assume that these people were the victims of hate crimes and were dying because of their gender. Now at this point, you gotta understand, I was totally unaware that the person I was arguing with now was not the same person who posted the original tweet because, you know, I'm an oblivious idiot motherfucker. Happens sometimes. So I said, you still really haven't showed how this is a free speech argument. Then, once I realized that it was a different person, I tweeted back saying, oh, my bad, I was referring to the original tweet. Now, this is, this is where it gets really fucking good. I want you guys to just take a look at this and see just how quick this goes from zero to you are an inhuman monster who does not care about death. So, right after the my bad tweet, he replies with, it's obvious that this is not a big problem for you. It's okay. Just admit that you're cool with trans people being killed. Whoa. Back it down there, buddy. When in any of my tweets did I say that none of this mattered, none of the people dying mattered because they were transgender? Where did I even give an inkling as to the fact that that was my position? I'll give you a hint. No place. See, this is the average MO of your SJWs and your feminists. I started this argument because I wanted to know how my words were killing innocent people. Because if they were, I would want to do something to change that. But I'd be willing to bet what I say has nothing to do with the fact that there's a few psychopaths out there that like to murder people. So, rather than helping me to understand, you know, showing me evidence, they'd rather label me something horrible, like a racist or a misogynist, which you'll normally see on Twitter. But in this case, someone who doesn't care about people dying because they happen to be trans. Because now that you've established that I'm some kind of fucking monster, my opinions can no longer be taken seriously. Anyway, the argument eventually ended on that tweet I showed you guys at the beginning. So, wait a minute. What did he say again? Ah, uh, right. I won't look it up myself. Well, you know, being the douchebag that I am, I do believe it's time to fire up the old googly machine and see what we got. Just for the record, we're trying to find, at the very least evidence that trans people are suffering large amounts of hate crimes based on their gender, meaning the only reason they were murdered was because they were trans. All right, so firstly, let's take a look at this list we were so generously provided with. So seeing as how this is the evidence we were given, this is the list we're going to use. The names and cases listed here, nothing more, nothing less. So let's start at number one, Monica Loera. She was fatally shot on January 22nd following an argument outside of her home. Statesman.com reports that, according to the affidavit, Loretta's roommate told police he believed Loretta might have stolen something from Rowell, a killer, which led to the argument. 
Laura would sometimes steal items from clients when she worked as a prostitute. See, this is not even close to a hate crime. You have someone who works as a prostitute who, while meeting with clients, robs them. Then was evidently caught and killed. Now, did she deserve to die? Of course not. She was just a thief. But it wasn't a hate crime. What's the moral here? Don't be a prostitute and rob your customers. The phrase, don't shit where you eat, comes to mind. Alright, number two. Jasmine Sierra. This one is super vague. The only information here is that she was found dead in her apartment. Her body had, quote, obvious signs of trauma. Literally nothing else. That's it. Signs of trauma could mean just about anything, though. Maybe she fell down the stairs. Maybe something fell on her head. Or maybe someone did indeed break into her house and beat her to death because they, fight, they found out a trans person was living in their neighborhood. Totally possible, but either way, not concrete evidence that this person was a victim of a hate crime. So, as of right now, just a murder. Number three, Maya Young. Maya was found stabbed to death in the street in Philadelphia. Tiffany Floyd and Jose Pena were arrested and charged with conspiracy and murder. So, conspiracy tells us that the murder was potentially planned. It doesn't tell us that they planned it because she was trans, though. There's still no information available as to the actual motive of the murder. So, as far as we're concerned here, still not a hate crime. Number four, DeMarcus Stansberry. DeMarcus was shot and killed in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He was shot in the head by Nicholas Matthews at 11.30 a.m. in Matthews' home. Nicholas was charged with negligent homicide because, according to police, he shot Stansberry by accident under the belief that his gun was empty after removing the clip. Local reports claim that Stansberry was shot at point-blank range. So, from what I could see here, fucking stupidity was to blame for this poor guy's death. Dude thought his gun was empty and decided to fuck around, waving it around, brandishing it, and ends up shooting his buddy. Now, is it possible the guy's lying and just hated his transgenderness? 100%. Maybe he was just a, a, a secret bigot. But if there was evidence that it wasn't a negligent homicide, the police would have tried to push for murder, something they could have gotten a life or a, a death sentence from. So, again, as far as we're concerned, no hate crime. Number five. Kendari Johnson. This is another vague one, unfortunately. Kendari was a 16-year-old teenager and found shot to death in Burlington, Iowa. The only information police have is that two vehicles were seen speeding away from the area after reported gunshots rang out. Police have found no evidence to suggest that Johnson's murder was motivated by gender. So, again, this could have been a hate crime, but it also could have been a number of other things. Maybe Kendari was hanging out with the wrong crowd. Maybe they were trying to rob him and things went south. But nothing concrete. We can't judge that it was a hate crime based on the lack of evidence. So, as it stands now, no hate crime. Number six, Courtney Davia Dawson Yakum. Courtney was fatally shot outside of her Los Angeles apartment in what, according to police, appeared to be a dispute with her former boyfriend. So, we just got a textbook case of domestic dispute here. Girl gets in fight with boyfriend. Boyfriend turns out to be a fucking psychopath. Shows up to her house. Kills her. Another tragic waste of life, but not a hate crime. Number seven, Shantae Thompson. This one is actually horrible. This is one of the few that, through my research, I actually found is a hate crime. Shantae Thompson and Willie Sims were brutally beaten and murdered by a group of allegedly eight people in Houston. One man was arrested and charged with capital murder and honestly... If there were eight people in that group beating these people to death, I hope they find all of them, bring them to justice, give them all the death penalty because this is horrible. Just because they're different, you're going to go fucking hunt somebody and murder them? Nah. This is a good time, though, to bring up the fact that no one I've ever seen is trying to say that there aren't racists, there aren't bigots in this country. Those kinds of things are always going to exist because some people are just pieces of shit and you cannot change their thinking. My only aim with my, you know, internet douchebaggery is to prove that this country, on the whole, does not hate anyone based on their race or gender. No one's trying to hold anyone down, you know, systematically, as they'll always try to make you believe. But like I said, you can't change everyone's views. So, that's one hate crime so far. Number eight, Kiana Blakeney. Kiana was found stabbed to death in her hotel room. It was revealed that she was killed by two men who she was set to meet while working as a prostitute. Her murderers have evidently set a date and planned to rob her. Things went south, and she unfortunately ended up dead. 
Not a hate crime, just someone who these fucking degenerates thought would be an easy target to rob. Number nine, Reese Walker. Reese was found stabbed to death in her home. A 16-year-old boy whose name is being withheld is being charged with her murder. According to the boy's parents, Reese tried to sexually assault the boy and the murder was self-defense. The police, however, have no evidence to indicate that this was the truth. Now, the parents could have just found out their kid killed somebody and just scrambled to make up a lie to get him off. Totally possible. But as it stands, no proof that the kid killed Reese because of her gender. So again, no definitive hate crime. Number 10, Mercedes Successful. Mercedes was, at least up to the point of his death, a crossdresser. Though his family and friends claimed that he had recently decided to transition. He was found shot to death in Florida behind a Big Lots store. He was dressed in shorts and a t-shirt, meaning no drag. So it's possible that the murderer didn't even know he was transgender. No suspects have been arrested, but it is worth noting that Assistant Chief Brian McNulty told Bay 9 News that there was no indication that his sexuality played a role in his death. So, say it with me now, no hate crime. Number 11, Amos Bede. Amos was beaten to death at a homeless camp in what was seemingly the culmination of a fight between two factions. According to police, his death was revenge for him pouring urine on someone. So what we have here is what amounted to a petty fight between two groups of people going way too far and getting somebody killed. I mean, honestly, you decide to literally take a piss on somebody, you're going to get fucked up. Again, meaningless, meaningless waste of life, but... Not a hate crime. Number 12, Goddess Diamond. This is, unfortunately, another vague one. Goddess was found dead by blunt force trauma in a burning car. There are no suspects and no witnesses, so not much to go on here. The police have stated that they have no indication that her murder was motivated by her gender. They are working with the FBI to determine if it was, though. So, as of right now, this one's still up in the air. So, as far as I can see, not a hate crime. Not yet, anyway. Number 13, Daniquia Dodds. Dee Dee, as her friends called her, was fatally shot on the 4th of July in D.C. Police have no information to suggest the crime was motivated by hate. Her family members were reportedly worried about her safety because she worked as, you guessed it, a prostitute. No suspects have been named and no arrests made. So this could very well turn out to be a hate crime. But considering up to this point we've seen a pattern of transgender prostitutes being murdered... I'd say it was a deal gone bad. Number 14, D. Wiggum. D. was on vacation and found stabbed to death and robbed in her hotel room on July 23rd. One arrest has been made and the charges are capital murder and robbery. However, it is unclear if the killing will be prosecuted as a hate crime. So they just know the guy killed and robbed her. They don't know if he did it because she was trans. Then we don't even know if he knew. So, if they're charging him with capital murder and robbery, and according to them, it isn't clear as to whether it was a hate crime or not, I'm going to lean to the no side. You know, innocent until proven guilty and everything. But, as with previous stories, I could be wrong. Maybe he just found that, hey, there's, a, there's somebody who's transgender in my hotel. I hate that. I'm going to go kill them. Who knows? Number 15, Sky Maccabee. Sky was found suspiciously in a parking lot in Cleveland, bleeding from the mouth, face down on the pavement. The police have not confirmed that they believe her gender played a role in her death. So, once again, no suspects, no motives, no arrests. This could have been a hate crime, or it could have been some health issue that just hasn't been made public. See, something I've noticed over, well, I guess my years of being alive, is a lot of people's families aren't very accepting of the fact that their kid happens to be transgender. So, a lot of the times they try to keep these things under wraps. And they won't tell anybody. And they'll just say, I, I don't talk to my son or I don't talk to my daughter anymore. So when things like this happen and unfortunately people die for either a health reason or maybe they actually were murdered, whatever it was. They'll just take the body. They'll bury them really quietly and get rid of it because they don't want their names all over the news. I think that's what a lot of these things are. Maybe, maybe that's just me being tinfoil hat. But I think a lot of these cases that remained unsolved and don't have any information is because... A lot of people's families, especially if your parents are older, you know, 60s, 70s, if your family is, they don't, they don't have as progressive views as a lot of the country. They don't, they're not as accepting a lot of people. And that's unfortunately 
a, a way that a lot of people have to live. And I understand that's that's shitty and that's horrible. But I don't think that necessarily points to the fact that these people were being killed out of hate. I just think that these are unfortunate situations that happened and their families decided, you know what, I don't want my name across across the paper saying my transgender kid died. I don't want anybody knowing that my kid was transgender. So let's just bury him, bury her, let's get it over with and move on. That's what I think it was. Again, I could be wrong. This could be just me pulling an argument out of my asshole, but I've seen it happen. Number 16, Erica Tiarina. Erica was found dead in her apartment in El Paso. No cause of death has been released. The only thing noted was obvious signs of foul play. The murder is not being investigated as a hate crime. Again, we don't know anything here, so it's very possible somebody in the neighborhood, oh shit, there's a transgender person, I hate transgender people, let me go beat them to death. Very possible. Again, we don't know. It could have just been somebody breaking in to rob the place and she fought back, got killed. We don't know. We don't know anything. So, but as far as we know right now, doesn't count as concrete. Number seven, Raylan Thomas. This is the other case on the list that was obviously a hate crime. No doubt, horrible, terrible situation. Murderer was a piece of shit and deserves what they get. So, Raylan was murdered by her mother's ex, a person who regularly called her the fucking devil. Kind of paints the, the, a picture of the person we're dealing with here. One day, he just walked out of the bedroom and shot Raylan because he felt like it. Another piece of shit who thinks he's better than everyone else. Now he's in jail, facing life in prison. Textbook, hate crime. So, after going through this entire list, how many instances of concrete, remember that term, concrete hate crimes did we find? Two. Two out of a list of 17 deaths. Based on this information, can we safely say that what the original tweet I replied to was true? Are people being hunted down and slaughtered because they decide to transition? And is it somehow due to the fact that people aren't using the right pronouns or something? No. I will tell you what I did notice, though. A pattern. A pattern of trans people taking work as prostitutes and usually ending up dead for it. See, prostitution, as long as it's illegal, will always be a highly unsafe profession. Because now that's illegal, you're constantly dealing with shady people. Right? You have no idea the kinds of people you're going to meet. They could show up to rob you. They could just be violent psychopaths looking to fucking murder somebody. It's not safe. Prostitutes, unfortunately, do end up getting killed a lot. So, more than anything, I would say the transgender community is facing a prostitution problem. And that could, that could be the fact that, as I've read in several articles, they have trouble getting work. That, that's a totally valid argument that we can have. But they're not just being killed because they decided to say, hey, I'm transgender. Look, the goal here was never to prove that people don't die or if they do die, that they somehow deserved it. Death is never a penalty that should be handed out by anyone. I was just trying to prove that it wasn't solely based on their gender. Just another thing that should be noted here. A lot of these cases were discovered fairly recently, like within the last one to two months. So it's totally possible that the investigations haven't concluded yet. And in a few weeks to a few months time, we'll come out to prove that indeed they were motivated by hate. And if that's the case, I would really love to look back into these cases in a little while to see what came out of them. This brings us back to the very first frame of this video. We all know you won't bother. You knew, huh? Oh, and for accusing me of not caring when innocent people are murdered? Let's see. Allow me to say this in the most eloquent way possible. You're a stupid cunt, suck my dick. 